it's Tammy. I've got my head chopped off on here, so I can't hardly see myself, but that's okay. I'm going to log into the platforms and see if we're all together this morning. It is Friday, and I finally have a normal day because Chris went fishing, and for the first day all week, I don't have an appointment to be at. What a blessing, and I'm still late, but I'm late because I have something to show you guys, and I was getting it ready. All right. So it looks like we're coming in clear on Facebook. I'm going to turn down my volume. Looks like everything is fine here. And then let's go to uh, YouTube <laughs> and see how we're looking on there. It's just part of it. I have to make sure everything's working before I get started. Um, Content live. All right, it's working! Yay! I wish I could see myself on here, but I can't. Um, but that's just the way it's going to be. I'll just look look at the the bottom of my shirt is what I can see, but that's fine. I got a lot of good feedback yesterday. I appreciate everybody that loves me so much and sent me sweet messages. And, of course, I did read your prayer requests, and I have you in my prayers. Um, I'm going to show you several things this morning, not anything major or bi big except for one thing. And that is, if you notice, the name of this study today was I got to meet Amy's boyfriend. Yes, I did. So I'm excited about that. I'm going to show you the Christmas cards I got, and I'm going to show you what he looks like. If I had thought about it, I was in the middle of posting a video when they walked in the house, and if I had thought about it, I would have taken a picture of them in front of the Christmas tree, but I didn't think about it, and I didn't do it. Um, so I had to eat. I had to call her this morning. She's working on schoolwork. You know, it's the week of finals. Yesterday was the last day of actual classes, and then they have finals over the next seven days or so, and she was working on a paper. And I said, send me a picture of Chris. And she's like, well, I don't have a good one. So I had to take the time out. It was a picture of them in a mirror. And I had to try to clip her out of the background because where she was, it was just a big blob because the flash of the camera. And so I doctored it up this morning and printed it so you could see what he looks like. <laughs> uh, but anyway, he was super sweet. And I enjoyed meeting him yesterday. Um and it was a surprise because she didn't tell us. Well, she texted her daddy and told him that she was coming, but he didn't tell me they were coming. I guess because I was working on that video and getting it out and he didn't want to interrupt me because he probably knew I'd get up and make up my bed or something crazy. Yesterday, I didn't even make up the bed. Today, I've made up the bed. I've had my shower. I've gotten dressed. I've put up clothes. It is a good day today. I'm hoping I have a really good day. All right. I got some Christmas cards in the mail. Three of them are on the wall, but I got two of them yesterday. Um, the ones on the wall, I guess I can go get them real quick. You know, I'm always disappearing. And then I bought these, this cookie tin behind me. I was going to show it to you guys, too. <laughs> I never, I never showed y'all the Santa my cousin got me. It's super cute. Maybe I'll do that to, well tomorrow Saturday. I'm gonna go ahead and get it too and show y'all. We are just, we are just gonna have a show and tell day. Okay, this is a Santa that my cousin sent me. Isn't he cute? She got him at milk. And what's so funny is called Santa's Workshop. It's, and uh, what's so funny is she had given my sister some, some of her old uh, Christmas decorations. And one of them was a Santa, and he stood about knee high. And, um, oh, my gosh, he was super cute. And he had a popping bag in his hand. 
And she found out how much I loved him. So she ordered me this one. I think she got it on Belk at Belk.com. But he's a Santa and he's holding a wire whisk and um, a spoon. And so I do have him on the top shelf of the um, kitchen cabinet, you know, my shelves in my kitchen. So anyway, isn't he a doll? He's super cute. Look at his boots. It stands up really well. And uh, I just wanted to show you guys my Santa. Okay. So I go in CVS yesterday. They finally get my medicine. It's been a fiasco. I'm, I'm going to tell you, it has been a fiasco. I go to the doctor Tuesday. I go in and they tell me they're going to call in the prescription. Well, they didn't call it in. And that was Tuesday. So Wednesday I called and they said that they would call it in by the end of the day, Wednesday. They didn't call it in. <laughs> and this is the pain medicine I've been out of all this time. And, um, and what it was just, I don't know what it was. I think the doctor was so busy. He has to sign off on it. And I think he was so busy. He just didn't catch it or sign off on it. So yesterday was the third day. And so I called him up. They called in my pregabalin, which is my Lyrica, but they didn't call in the pain medicine. I couldn't believe it. It was day three. And after I had called, and I never have to do this, um, I felt so ridiculous having to do it. But after I called them yesterday, and I said, look, this is day three. Can't we get something done? Yes, we will. He's out of the office today. We're going to get somebody else on it. So then I called the pharmacy. Now, we've been to the pharmacy three times. Chris had went to the grocery store to buy some stuff because I'm cooking appetizers and stuff for the show. I said, stop by the pharmacy. So he goes by the pharmacy. <laughs> he goes, um, okay, and he brings it home. And it's my, my Lyrica. And I said, well, where's the pain medicine? He said, they don't have it. <laughs> that was day three. I couldn't believe it. And I called the pharmacist. And I said, what is going on? And she said, well, they called me. And they said, when's the last date she got this filled? And we told them October the 22nd. And they just hung up. And then they didn't call it in. So I had to call and leave another message. Y'all, I finally got my medicine late last night. Can you believe that? It was three days. I have no idea what is going on, but I guess everybody is just so busy that they don't have time to cross all their T's and dot their I's. But anyway, so today I have medicine. Praise the Lord. I don't take my pain medicine every day, but on days that I want to get a lot done, I do take it. Um, I did take it this morning about 30 minutes ago because I want to make at least two recipes today in the kitchen. I'll be videoing by myself and I'm excited. I'm making cheese straws and I've got to decide what else I'm going to make. I want to make something with some puff pastry. So y'all be looking forward to these videos. A lot of you got to see the intro, the new Christmas intro. If you didn't get to see it and you just watched Real Southern Woman, hop over to my Collard Belly Cooks page and just watch at least the beginnings of the quiche that I made yesterday so that you can see the little intro I put together. It's super cute. Um, and I'm going to show you these cards. Then we're going to look at Chris is Amy's boyfriend's name. Then we're going to do Bible study. I hope y'all are having a wonderful, wonderful day. Um, I have a spammer on here this morning. Let me block him. Now, look, y'all, whenever these guys and gals, whoever they are, uh, whenever they um, comment underneath one of your comments, this is on Facebook today, um, they're always asking you to go somewhere to look at something. Can they, they compliment you and all that? Please ignore them. We cannot monitor them every second okay so don't respond ignore them and then we will delete them and ban them from the page when the when the video is over or when i see it later in the day um just a, there's no, nothing you can do about it 
Um, this is such a pretty card that I got yesterday. Look how pretty it is. It has um, a cutout of Mary and baby Jesus, and it's lifted off the page, which is always pretty. You know, they make the most beautiful cards now. Um, this card is from Gia, let's see, Jim and Rochelle Walters. Um, it says that they watch our videos in our Facebook and they get our newsletter and they love it all. If you haven't signed up for our newsletter, go to the website on the front page. It looks like Santa writing a letter and you can click on that and subscribe to our newsletter. We only send one email a month, so you're not going to get bombarded or anything, I promise. And it's just an update. I usually tell you um, what videos were the most watched for the month. Um, what all's going on and just some tidbits about personal stuff normally. Um, but this is from Jim and Rochelle Walters. I just love Christmas cards. If y'all want to send me a Christmas card, uh, by all means do it <laughs> because I love them so much. Um, and I will go ahead and tell you guys what my address is. I don't care. I'm going to give you my home address. My sister always pitches a fit. But you know what? All y'all got to do, if you want my home address, is look it up. It's not. Uh-oh, I just wrote it down wrong. No, that's not good. Let me try this over. What I'll do is I'll put it up here. And then when y'all go back, you can just stop. The screen on the play with the play button, and um, and then write it down. If you've got a pen, it's two five seven point like the point of a pencil. Point Peter Place, like Peter Rabbit. Point Peter Place, St. Mary's, Georgia, 31558. And you can send that to us. Um, and I would love to get it. Now, this is backwards. I, sh I can't write it backwards. I don't know what to do. I can't write backwards, y'all. I forget I'm on backwards. Anyway, it's 257 Point Peter Place, St. Mary's, Georgia, 31558. Isn't that crazy? Always something. All right. Are you ready? Oh, let me finish my cards. This is a Christmas prayer. This is from Glenn and Matthew. Um, and it says, let the heavens rejoice and the earth be glad. Before the Lord, for he comes. Amen. Uh, it says, may the miracle of Christmas that we celebrate today fill your heart with peace and wonder and bring happiness your way. From his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. John 1, 16. Amen. Thank you, Matthew and Glenn. And they live in Florida. I can't tell you where they, you know. Um, and then this couple right here, the Jim and Rochelle Walters. Let's see. I can't remember everybody's by heart, but let me see where they live. Well, where's y'all's card? Oh, here it is. They live in Illinois. And she put in hers. Listen to this. Oh. Uh, Us Northerners, we cook like Mama did too. <laughs> oh, I just love it. Okay, then this is my little card that I got from Alice when she sent me the cross stitch. Isn't it pretty? It's got a cross stitch. Oh my gosh, Alice, I'm just now realizing this. Can you believe that? I thought it was a photo. Holy smokes. She cross-stitched the front of this card. I know I got the most high-pitched voice sometimes. I'm sorry, but I get excited. It says, wish upon a star. And it's got a bear looking up at the sky with stars up in the sky. And she cross-stitched that. How special. Sorry, Alice, I didn't even notice it. I'm so glad I took it off the wall. I have it hanging in my kitchen. 
All right. And then I've got a snowman from Miss Gina. It says, and she makes her cards too. May peace be your gift at Christmas and your blessing all through the year with much love, Gina. I love you, Gina. And you always send us special things and handmade things. And I, and I really do love them. You know, I really do love even things like cards. I just, um, it makes me feel so loved from y'all. But it's beautiful, Gina. And she's colored his, um, she made this card and she colored it. It looks like she painted it with a, um, shiny silvery marker that almost it has glitter in it and then she put blue on his um scarf and orange on his nose all right and then this is the last one these are the first ones i've gotten this year it says rejoice and this one is from rebecca and and i'm not going to say her last name i keep messing up and saying last names um it says his birth a miracle his love our gift his day, time to rejoice. Let us rejoice in all he has given us and love each other as he loves us. Merry Christmas. Amen. Thank you so much, Rebecca Ann. Now, that is my cards that I've gotten over the last two days, and I wanted to share them because, you know, a lot of us put time in cards. We, some people even make them like a couple of these, and it's nice that not only I would get to enjoy them, but all of the viewers, because we have a lot of viewers. All right, are y'all ready to see Amy's boyfriend? Now, remember, this is not a photograph that was taken as a profile picture or anything like that. This is a snapshot that she got of him in the mirror. It's a reflection snapshot, so I had to flip it. And, of course, it's going to be flipped backwards. This is Chris. She says, Mama, he don't take good photos. I said, he's so handsome. And y'all, he was so sweet yesterday um, when they came in. What they were doing yesterday was, um, if y'all don't know what Amy looks like, if some of y'all are new, let me get a picture down of her so you can see her. Um, but he is going to have a very fancy um, Christmas party with his work and so she had to dress up and uh she came home to look at her dresses to see what she might want to wear and he came with her but this is amy and chris so anyway this is her first boyfriend and i know uh she's excited and um he's a sweetheart he works like crazy which i love he has two jobs <laughs> And he goes to school. So, you know, this mama's proud. I love it when a man works. Praise God for that, right? He works two jobs. He works in restaurants. He works in um, a Thai restaurant and a, an Asian restaurant called Flock to the Walk. Okay. The owners of these restaurants have like four or five different ones. And they're getting to go to their most special and expensive restaurant and they're closing down the restaurant just for their Christmas party. So they are really excited about it. Uh, maybe one day, um, if things work out, he could have his own restaurant or help us with Collard Valley Cooks and teach me how to make some Asian food. That's good. Um, but anyway, that's them. I'm excited. Um, things are just going really well for this mama right now, I have to say. Um, and she's, since she's got a boyfriend, she don't party near as much. <laughs> I'm proud of that too. I always tell Chris, I'd rather him have a boyfriend um, than not because it does settle him down a little bit. Okay. One last thing, it's Friday and I won't be back till Monday, so I'm showing y'all everything at one time. Hope y'all are enjoying it. Let me look and see if I've got any more bad people on here. Rose is in the hospital with COVID pneumonia. Rose, I'm so sorry. Bless your heart. Rose, we'll be praying for you. And I will look through here. And I promise I do read your prayer requests and I do pray for you. Um. This, when I went into CVS last night to get my medicine, I want some butter cookies. And, you know, they usually come in the little round tins. 
Well, because I was disappointed in the cookies that I bought at Sam's Club the other day. You know, I said, shh, you know, I, I snuck them into the cart. I saw two viewers in there, and one of them was at my buggy, and I said, I really want some cookies. And she said, well, get them. Chris had went over to get cheddar cheese because I'm looking at the wrong thing. Chris had went over to get cheddar cheese because um, we were going to do these appetizers. And I was telling her how much I love butter cookies. And I said, but we've been on this diet and I just hate to buy them, but I just love them. And I went over there and I got them and I got them home and I really didn't like them. I didn't like the chocolate on them. And so when I went into the drugstore last night, I was thinking, oh, I really want some butter cookies. And these are okay, but I think I'm going to make some um, delicious butter cookies with toasted pecans in them. Anyway, I won't toast the pecans first, but you know what I mean. Um, excuse me. This was super cute, and I bought it. And this is why I bought it. I wouldn't have normally bought it. Uh, they had little tins of cookies that were $1.99, and that's what I picked up. So I went to the front, and I said, do y'all not have any big tins of cookies this year in here? And she said, yes. Well, she took the time out to go into the store and walk down the aisle and show me this. So then I felt obligated to buy it. I've been on here for 30 minutes talking to y'all. I got to chill. That's my um, bird. And Rhonda, every time that bird sings, I think of you. Because Rhonda gave me that bird. Uh, clock. Well, anyway, she got this and she showed it to me and I was like, I felt like I had to buy it because she took the time out to take me over there. It was $12.99, but I'm going to show it to you. It lights up. Y'all can't see it like that. Let's see. You still can't see it. Well, it lights up. Now you can see it. Love Snoopy, right? He's the coolest dog on the planet, except for your dog, right? <laughs> so I bought that, and the cookies in it are huge in case you want to go get you one or get somebody this for Christmas. My signal's going in and out this morning. Good Lord. What's the deal? Um, I will show you how big the cookies are in it. They are Santa heads, stars, and trees. Praise the Lord for the star, right? The Bethlehem star. If you didn't get to watch the Bethlehem star that we reported last year, um, and I know scientifically people want to argue about whether or not it was the Bethlehem star, but to us Christians, we can say it was if we want to. Um, it is on the page. If you want to go back and take a look at that video on Colored Valley Coots where we recorded the Bethlehem star last year. It's really cool. Um, but anyway, I'm glad that they do include star on the Snoopy box. I don't know who put these together. Let's see. Original Gourmet distributed out of Salem, New Hampshire. Okay. Well, I've talked enough. Are y'all ready to do Bible study? <laughs> what a wonderful day I'm going to have in the kitchen. All right, let's see. Let's open it up. Take a look at what the Lord is saying to us today. Trolls Spurgeon's Bible study. Today is December the 3rd, and this is the morning reading. There is no spot in thee. This comes out of the Song of Solomon. Let me tell y'all this. The new church that we're going to is called Christ's Church. He did a study from the Song of Solomon. Boy, was it something else. 
And um, if you're interested in hearing it, um, it is Christ Church of Camden in Kingsland, Georgia, if you search it and watch um, his series on that. It was really, really good. Now, it's all about relationships. And it's about, and I'll bring this up because this is out of the Song of Solomon. Uh, in the Song of Solomon, Solomon is talking to his bride-to-be, and his bride-to-be is talking to him. And they're talking about a lot of stuff that kind of seems really strange, but to them back in the day, it had symbology, okay? Um, and there was reasons behind the things they said. And they it goes through them courting and dreaming about each other and then all the way to their wedding day and then their wedding night and how they consummated their marriage and how much fun it was believe it or not um i don't i, I want you to know that a lot of people want to believe or think that sex or making love is is something that um, is only like that God would think negatively about it or but God gave us that for a reason to multiply and it is a beautiful thing between a bride and her husband and the groom and it is a glorious thing. And God is actually delights in it when it's done the right way. All right. And he would have us delight in it as well. So this um, is in talking about that in a way. But this time it's showing us as the Christian and Christ as our bridegroom. And it is a picture of our relationship with him. And um, it was just a really good study that he did because um, his wasn't so much about Christ and us as it was us and our um, marriage. All right. It says, there is no spot in thee. Having pronounced his church positively full of beauty, our Lord confirms his praise by a precious negative. There is no spot in thee. As if he thought, as if the thought occurred to the bridegroom that the discontented world would suggest that. So think about that. When, when Christ looks at us, his bride, he says, there is no spot in thee. He only mentioned her attractive parts and had purposely omitted her features, which were deformed or defiled. He sums up all by declaring her universally and entirely fair and utterly devoted, devoid of stain. So he lets us, he don't talk about the ugliness of his bride because you know all of us have things about us that aren't perfect and actually the pastor even talked about that during this thing because he said the world pictures people to be beautiful and when you see them in the movies or you see them in a photo lots of times they're even photoshopped and you don't see their blemishes. And so therefore, when a couple gets together and a man sees his bride, he shouldn't pick out her blemishes. He shouldn't see her blemishes. Because she's beautiful in his eyes. She needs to know that she's beautiful in his eyes. And that's what Jesus does for us. He doesn't see our blemishes. He only sees the beauty. And yes, of course we have blemishes. Who doesn't? So he only mentions the attractive parts. It says a spot can be removed. 
and is the very least thing that can disfigure beauty. And I thought about this too. Like when we look in the mirror and we get older, what do we get? Age spots. And when I was growing up, I had lots of spots all over my face, which were freckles. When I was little, I always thought that I was so ugly because of all of my freckles. But that's the very least thing that can make us unattractive. Okay. And it can be removed. Now, I wouldn't remove my freckles, but we would all like to remove our age spots if we could. Unless we're just proud that the Lord's let us live this long to obtain them, right? But it says, a spot can be removed and is the very least thing that can disfigure beauty. But even from this little blemish, the believer is delivered in his Lord's sight. Even from the little blemishes, he delivers us. He sees us as a spotless bride. Is that not a miracle in itself? The fact that Jesus Christ could look at you and me and not see our blemishes? If he had said there is no hideous scar, no horrible deformity, no deadly ulcer, we might even then have marveled. But when he testifies that she is free from the slightest spot, all these other forms of defilement are included, and the depth of wonder is increased. If he had but promised to remove all spots as time would go by, like if we had to obtain it, if we had to continually gain our beauty, we should have had eternal reason for joy. But when he speaks of it as already done, who can restrain the most intense emotions of satisfaction and delight? It's already done. We don't have to obtain it. We don't have to be worthy of it or get all these blemishes removed. We are just beautiful to him. Just like that. When we accept him as our bridegroom and savior. Oh, my soul, here is marrow and fatness for thee. Eat thy full and be satisfied with royal dainties. Jesus Christ has no quarrel with his spouse. She often wanders from him and grieves his Holy Spirit. But he does not allow her faults to affect his love. Isn't that true? We do often wonder from Jesus and we do grieve the Holy Spirit many times because, you know, you don't have to do things or say things out loud. He knows what's in your heart. He sometimes scolds, but it is always in the tenderest manner with the kindest intentions. It is my love even then. There is no remembrance of our follies. He does not cherish ill thoughts of us, but he pardons and loves us as well after the offense as before it. He pardons us. He frees us from sin. It is well for us because if Jesus were as mindful of injuries as we are, how could he connect with us? Many a time, a believer will put himself out of humor with the Lord for some slight turn in providence. But our precious husband knows our silly hearts too well to take any offense at our ill manners. Wow. We are about... We have begun the month of celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ. The birth of Jesus Christ, God, coming to our earth and being born as a birth from that virgin, growing up and walking on this earth as God and man at the same time, and then giving himself as a sacrifice 
so that we could be pardoned of our sin. And he loves us that much. He loves us so much that we're without spot or wrinkle. And even when we're silly, like this says, even when we grieve his Holy Spirit, he still doesn't take offense to our manners. Isn't that amazing that he loves us that much? That we're forgiven forever. That he has us in his hand and he won't let us go. Just unbelievable really it is unbelievable you have to in order to believe in jesus christ you can't do it with your mind you have to do it with your spirit because it is a spirit thing i hope you've enjoyed today's bible study it was absolutely beautiful and i hope you enjoyed my show and tell today thanks for hanging in there and um watching the study and listening to the Bible study as well. I hope it was a blessing. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. And I will see you guys on Monday morning at 930, Lord willing. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for a day. We thank you for a new day. That we can wake up. Lord, and be used by you um, as a vessel. May we surrender to your spirit. May we surrender to your ways. Um, and look to you for our joy. For this world will disappoint us and people will disappoint us. But Jesus, you will never disappoint us for you are our bridegroom. And we look forward to the day that we are reading, we're, that we're united with you in heaven. It will be such a glorious day when we become your bride. And we thank you. Thank you so much. For giving yourself as a sacrifice so that we could be included in God's family. Be with all of those listening today. I pray that you would wrap your arms around them and give them comfort. Pray for these that are in the hospital, that are watching from their hospital bed, Lord. That you would touch them and give them peace and joy even in the situation that they're in. I pray that you would be with those that are lonely during this time of year and those that have lost loved ones to COVID and they seem so empty for this season. Lord, I just pray that your love would so abound and fill their hearts that they would be comforted and know that their loved ones are in a wonderful place and one day they're going to be there too. May you give them joy in this hard time be with us as we go throughout today help us love and encourage each other and help us be a blessing in christ's name we pray amen y'all have a wonderful and blessed day i'm about to go make some cheese straws i'll see you later in the kitchen love ya.